Go ahead. <laughs> uh, the second thing has to do with the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. So what I find most interesting about the Big Bang is actually the person who came up with it was a Jesuit priest who was trying to explain how God would have put the universe into motion. Mm -hmm. And the biggest people who were opponents of it were atheists mm -hmm. because they said it was too Christian. Mm -hmm. um, so I was wondering what your thoughts on that would be. The Big Bang, once rejected by early atheists because it was discovered by a Christian, has now become a key argument against God's existence. Let's dive into this fascinating twist. Well, we actually cover that in the book. Uh, I think you're talking about George Lamatre, if, I'm under, if I remember yeah. his name correctly. He was one of the first, he was a Roman Catholic priest who, who formulated this. Uh, but the guy that actually coined the term Big Bang was an atheist by the name of Fred Hoyle. And Fred Hoyle, I think later in his life, realized that um, his atheistic worldview didn't fit the evidence. I don't know if he ever became a Christian. I don't think he did. But he, after the evidence showed that the universe had a beginning, said to his colleagues, what are you going to call this thing? The Big Bang? And they all went, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> we'll call it the Big Bang. It was supposed to be a derisive term. But Hoyle is, the, is the, the guy who famously said, after looking at the fine-tuning of the universe, he said, a super intellect has monkeyed with physics and biology, and there are no blind forces worth speaking about in nature. That's what the evidence showed. So... Um, it would be a genetic fallacy, however, to say that because a Roman Catholic priest thought of this first, that therefore he's biased and therefore the argument doesn't work. Whether an atheist thought of it or observed it or a Christian, that's irrelevant. What's relevant is what does the evidence show? And I think the evidence clearly shows there was a beginning. And if there was a beginning, there must be a beginner. Was there another angle on this you wanted well, to get to? I, I completely agree with the uh, concept that God put the universe into motion through mm -hmm. the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. That was actually one of the most important things to me to becoming a Christian, mm -hmm. actually. So um, I would say it is important that Christians did figure this out first, specifically, oh, it doesn't matter which denomination. What matters is that it was someone who was trying to explain how God would have put the universe into motion and that argument was so on the mark, or his explanation for how he did it was so on the mark, that it's now the key scientific explanation as to how the universe was put into motion. So I would say that's pretty important. Yeah, of course the proponents of the Big Bang, if they're not theists, will say, well, we don't know what caused it, just to be fair. Well, they would right. say it happened because it had to happen, to quote Bill Nye, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. But. Well, no, I think, uh, I think Stephen Hawking was worse by saying, because there's a law like gravity, the universe can and will create itself out of nothing. Okay, so yeah, they come up with some very bizarre ways of trying to explain the ultimate origin of all things, and it seems to me they fail. But thank you, appreciate it, Jacob. Yeah, God bless, day. thank you. The questions raised about the Big Bang Theory open up profound discussions about the relationship between science and Christianity, as well as how scientific discoveries point toward the existence of God. Let's explore the key issues the origin of the Big Bang Theory and its Christian roots. The Big Bang Theory, formulated by Jesuit priest Georges Lemaitre, describes the universe having a beginning, a moment when space, time, and matter came into existence. Atheists initially rejected it, arguing it sounded too Christian as it aligned with Genesis 1:1:1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible had long asserted that the universe had a definitive starting point a notion now affirmed by science. Lemaitre's background as a Christian and scientist underscores an important truth. Faith and reason are not at odds. Romans 1.20 explains, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made. The Big Bang highlights how God's creative power is visible in the universe's origins. The theory's initial rejection by atheists reflects the challenge of reconciling such evidence with a secular worldview. Does the source of the theory matter? The student correctly notes that the denomination or faith of the theorist doesn't change the validity of the evidence. The question is not who proposed the Big Bang, but what the evidence reveals. The scientific principle of following the evidence where it leads is crucial here. 
Hebrews 11.3 states, By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Whether proposed by a priest, an atheist, or a scientist of another worldview, the Big Bang Theory aligns with the biblical concept of creation ex nihilo, God creating everything from nothing. Atheistic explanations for the Big Bang. Non-theistic explanations for the Big Bang, such as it happened because it had to happen, or Stephen Hawking's claim that because there is a law like gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing, fall short. These views fail to address the fundamental question, why is there something rather than nothing? A law like gravity is not a physical entity capable of creating. It is a description of how things behave. As Frank Turek often points out, laws describe actions but do not act on their own. Genesis 1-3 reveals the true cause. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God's spoken command initiated the existence of all things. The Big Bang points to a cause outside space and time, a creator. Only a being like the God of the Bible fits this description. Recommended resources, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist, by Frank Turek and Norman Geisler. The Case for a Creator, by Lee Strobel. God and the Astronomers, by Robert Jastrow. These books delve into how science and faith converge to affirm God's existence. If you found this discussion insightful, check out our channel for more videos exploring the intersection of science, faith, and apologetics. Let's dive deeper into truth together.